But first, Donald Trump created an international incident insulting some of America's key allies. Oh, sorry, wait, did I say Donald Trump? No, no, sorry, I meant Joe Biden, which is probably the reason why you haven't heard much about this. You see, Joe Biden was talking about how wonderful his open border policies are to some big Democrat donors. And in the process, he called nations like India and Japan, who are some of America's closest friends and tightest security partners, well, he called them xenophobic, which is a pretty big way of saying racist. Have a look. Well, I spent a lot of time with President Abe, his vice president, and guess what? There's called Abe economics, Abe economics they're talking about, Ricardo. And that is there's an entire move because they are xenophobic, because they don't want to invite other people from outside their country to come in and make up the workforce. They have fewer workers than they have a need for workers. And he said much the same thing about India in the same speech. But, of course, Japan's economy has famously flatlined. But even though it doesn't take much in the way of Venezuelan gang members seeking a better life, India has still managed a 6.6 percent growth rate this year, according to estimates. So maybe Joe Biden, instead of insulting allies for not embracing the left's particular love for cultural diversity, Maybe you should work on making Bidenomics work for ordinary Americans and not just asset-rich Democrat donors. All right, to the Trump trial. Which one? The one in New York, of course. Joining us now to discuss the latest in the left's legal witch hunt of Donald Trump, John Heideraker. John, thanks so much for coming on the U.S. Report. Now, tell me about the latest on this, because I understand the president, the former president, has been reprimanded by Judge Juan Merchan ruling that he was in contempt of court on nine of the first 10 violations of a gag order. However, another hearing on alleged breaches has taken place today. So what is the latest? Well, the latest, James, is that uh, Trump is being accused of, again, violating this gag order, which I think clearly infringes his First Amendment rights. He's not supposed to say anything about jurors or witnesses or family members of various people. So the most recent one is that Trump said that this jury was picked from a heavily Democratic district in Manhattan. Well, that is absolutely true. There's no question about it. <laughs> and, and you know, the idea, any anyone else, you know, if you were on trial, if I was on trial, you could comment on the jury, you can comment on the judge, on the prosecutors. That's your right. And 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 Juan Merchant has taken that right away from Donald Trump. And, and it's an absolute outrage. But James, I would say more fundamentally than that, this whole prosecution is an absolute outrage. Well, yeah, I mean, and we've talked a lot on this show, and we've discussed ourselves how they've taken what would have been a misdemeanor at most and spun it into two or three dozen felony charges here. Um, and there's a lot of questions around the constitutionality of all this. Now, there's going to be a political question at some point, and I think you've spoken about this, how at some point there could be a crisis where he says, well, this whole trial is unconstitutional. I'm not going to participate in it. Tell us, lay people out there who aren't lawyers, how this could work and whether or not it would work. Well, James, I don't know if it would work or not. I mean, we are dealing here in the realm of politics, not the realm of law. This whole prosecution is a sham. It is a farce. It has no more legal standing than Stalin's show trials of the 1930s. The difference is that Donald Trump is not being tortured in the cellars of Lubyanka Prison. He doesn't necessarily have to go along with this. And I've raised the question, what if Donald Trump just says, I'm out of here? You know, one of the fundamental reasons why they're doing this is to prevent Donald Trump from campaigning. Joe Biden can't campaign because he is senile and feeble. Donald Trump can campaign. So Judge Mershon had said, has said, you have to be in court every single day. You can't leave the courthouse. Why is he doing that? So Trump can't campaign and take advantage of Joe Biden's feebleness. So this whole thing is an attempt to interfere with the 2024 presidential election. So what if Donald Trump just says, you know what? I'm out of here. 
I'm going to go campaign. You don't need me. When it's my turn to testify, maybe I'll come back. But this trial, this criminal prosecution has zero legitimacy, and I'm not going to give it legitimacy by going along with it. I mean, you can only imagine the howling outrage if he did such a thing. But there's also an interesting theory that I've been toying with this week here. And we did see Trump campaign in Michigan. He has been doing some events. And of course, he's also campaigning hard in New York because, well, he's more or less stuck there. But there's also a question. If you look at the polls, Trump is moving back up again against Joe Biden. Is there a chance that being kept in the courtroom so much means that well, in a sense, it's actually kind of helping his campaign because Biden's out there making mistakes. Trump isn't out there saying sometimes controversial things that winds up with the focus being, again, back on Biden and the old rule, never interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. Well, that's an interesting theory, James. Maybe the best thing that could happen to Donald Trump is to keep him off the campaign trail <laughs> and to keep him from giving speeches where he's riffing with unscripted, you know, uh, rifts in front of thousands of people. I don't know. You might have a point there. This whole election is crazy. You know, this is the election that neither candidate can win. You've got one candidate who's obviously senile, who can't read a teleprompter, who can't walk without having aides helping him, who has to wear special shoes so he doesn't fall down. And then you have another candidate who's in the midst of four separate criminal proceedings. Now, those are you know, we could talk about them. They're very frivolous criminal proceedings. Nevertheless, the fact is Trump is dragging a lot of baggage around behind him. And I've been wondering for the last couple of years how either of these candidates could possibly win this election. But also, finally, what about these protests here, which have been rocking the country for the last couple of weeks here? It's like 2020 all over again with the Black Lives Matter protests. But it would seem to me that these would play exactly into Trump's hand. And even though they're being funded and pushed by all these left wing organizations, from where I'm sitting, if I'm an American voter, I'm thinking, why on earth would I vote for the party that's encouraging this? It seems like this would be playing out very much to Trump's strengths. What do you think? I think you're absolutely right, James. I mean, I mean, people associate this violence and this chaos with liberalism and with the Democratic Party. Ilhan Omar's daughter, for example, was one of the people arrested at Columbia, and Ilhan expressed great pride in that fact. I mean, people understand who's in favor of law and order and who's in favor of just these insane demonstrations on behalf of a terrorist organization, Hamas. These people are demonstrating on behalf of mm. gang rape and mass murder, that is what they are celebrating. Most Americans understand that and they hate it. You are absolutely right.